Hey, thanks for watching Joyce's YouTube channel. We pray you find encouragement and exactly what you're looking for here. Did you know that these videos that you watch for free are available with the help of our Joyce Meyer Ministries partners? As a result, people are learning how to apply God's word to their lives and come out of some really dark places. If God's using these teachings to bring you closer to Him, let me encourage you to join us and become a partner today. Join the team that is sending His Word around the world. You can do big things together with us. Scan our QR code now and begin sharing the love and knowledge of Jesus Christ everywhere. This program is made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. We have spiritual weapons. The name of Jesus is a weapon. Praise and worship is a weapon. Knowing who you are in Christ is a weapon. I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Well, welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. We're so glad that you've joined us today. And I believe that what I'm going to teach on today is going to help you. Matter of fact, I can't think of anybody who doesn't need to hear teaching on this subject. I'm going to talk today and then for the next two days about our thoughts and especially how to think certain thoughts on purpose to help renew your mind so you see yourself and you see your life in a different way. Our thoughts are very, very powerful. Our thoughts not only turn into words and emotions, but they also turn into our actions. There's no action that we take that hasn't first been in our mind. And um, most people, probably like I was for many years, I didn't think I could do anything about my thoughts never occurred to me that I could change them or even control them or choose my own thoughts. I just thought, well, you, I really didn't think about it. You know, just whatever came in my head, that was what I thought. And uh, through the Word of God and other good Christian reading material, I found out that the devil has access to our mind and he, can, he can't read our mind but I think that he can read the body language that comes from our mind. So sometimes, you know, if you're worried, your body's going to show that in some way, shape, or form, and so then he'll dump all kinds of thoughts in your head about how terrible the situation's going to be. And the battlefield that we fight, we are in a war. Satan's God's enemy, so he's our enemy. And he, uh, he tries to control us by putting thoughts in our mind that are the opposite of God's word. So in Proverbs 23, 7, the Bible actually says that as a man thinks, so is he. Or one translation says, so does he become. I like to say it this way, where the mind goes, the man follows. And there's a simple example I use. If you think about a dessert that you love, long enough, more than likely you will go get it. I mean, you might even get dressed and go get in your car and go get it. That's how much our thoughts can affect us and pressure us and make us want to do things. So you can imagine some of the thoughts that people think, like if somebody hurt you, you may be doing just fine. You think you've worked through forgiveness and you're doing good, and then if you decide to, the devil reminds you of it, so if you keep that thought and you meditate on what they've done to you for a few hours, pretty soon you're going to be all mad again and maybe wanting to go get revenge or to talk about them in an unkind way, whereas before you were doing just fine. So whatever's on our mind is very, very important, and the Bible says that we are to renew our mind. Now, I'm gonna talk specifically about something I call power thoughts, which is thinking things on purpose over and over, which is meditation. Meditation means to 
think on something over and over and even to mutter it like quietly under your breath or to speak it out loud. And it helps to renew your mind. And so the Bible tells us to see ourselves in Christ and that if we have faith in him, that we receive the same thing that he earned. He earned it, we get it, but it always comes through faith. Well, for me, I had to, I don't know, I feel like a million times I had to say I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Uh, You can elaborate on things like that and say, I'm not guilty when the devil tells me that I'm guilty after I've repented. He's a liar. The devil is a liar. He does nothing but lie. The word of God says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So you, you know, as you go through these 12, which I won't be able to teach on all 12. I'm going to start by telling you what the 12 are. But uh, as you as you meditate on them, let's just say you meditated for a month on I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And then the next one is I will not fear. Well, by the time the second month comes along and you're meditating on things about fear, you're going to also remember I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And so you'll bring that up. And if you have not had any experience with this, what I'm telling you is absolutely the truth. When your mind changes, your behavior changes. And the more we think like God thinks, the happier we are and the more peaceful that we are. And people make a mistake. They think money will make them happy and possessions will make them happy and powerful positions will make them happy. But really, it's the first thing the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So until you have peace with God, know who you are in Christ. And, you know, like I always felt like God was mad at me. Just vaguely, God was mad at me. There was always something I had done that surely God was mad at me. But, you know, Jesus heard the Father say, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And then again, when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, a voice came out from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, we need to be able to hear things like that too. And right away, the enemy says to you, well, God can't be pleased with you. And he starts reminding you of things that you've done. That's when you need to open your mouth and say, I'm forgiven. I've repented of that and I'm forgiven. So the power thoughts are, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I will not fear. I can do whatever I need to do in life. And that's really big because when I get into a little bit of teaching on that, there's so many things that we think, well, I just, I can't take this anymore. I can't do this anymore. It just, it's too much. I just, I can't do this. You know, or or when maybe opportunities come along, God wants you to step out into something. It's like, no, no, I I can't do that. We're not the first ones like that. Gideon was like that. I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of, people in the Bible that were like that. But the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now, we can't just do anything we want to do, but anything that God tells us in his word to do, we can do it. He's not going to tell us to do things and then stand back and laugh at us because we're incapable and can't do it. So that's been one of the things that's been helpful to me is to realize that anything that God tells me to do or asks me to do, I can do it. I can't do it apart from him, and he's not going to do it all for me. So there's a partnership that we form, and I'm constantly asking him for help. I always have a positive attitude. I promptly obey God. I don't make decisions based on feelings. (laughs) I am very generous. I love to give. I am very careful about what I say. I treat people the way I want to be treated. I love people. I enjoy my life, all of it. We can't just enjoy the, I get a vacation or it's Friday and so now I don't have to work this weekend, but you you can enjoy cleaning your house, you can enjoy going to the grocery store because our joy is in Christ, it's not in what we're doing. And so if we remember that he's with us and we can talk with him, no matter what we're doing, that'll give us joy. God meets all of my needs abundantly. There's so many people that suffer terribly with the fear of never having enough. 
people are afraid they won't have enough when they retire. They're afraid, you know, they're going to lose their job. They're always afraid that they're not going to, their needs are not going to be met. But God promises us all over the word that he will never leave us nor forsake us and he will meet all of our needs. And then the last one is, and I don't think it's actually one in the book, but I added it because I think it's important. I am quick to forgive because that has become such a huge problem in the world today. I honestly believe there are more people that are angry than those that are not. It's just, and the Bible tells us that's gonna be one of the signs of the end times in Matthew 24. It says that many will be offended and the love of the great body, which is the body of Christ, will grow cold because of all the multiplied wickedness and lawlessness in the land. So when we get our mind on everything wrong that's going on and everything wrong that people are doing, we, we need to keep our mind on loving people. That's the main thing that Jesus commands us to do. This is what I command you, love one another. This is what I command you, love one another. One new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this will all men know that you are my disciples. So let's just stop here for just a moment, especially for our TV audience, and give you just a moment to think. And let me just ask you, who are you mad at? Is it really worth it? They could be out having a good time and you're miserable because you're angry and your anger is not going to change them. So you could do what the Bible says and begin to pray for them, forgive them and begin to pray for them and realize that hurting people hurt people. Most people that hurt us don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to see how miserable I can make Joyce today. They're just acting out of their own pain and their own misery and a lot of times they don't even realize what they're doing. So, thoughts. We can do and we can have what God says we can do and what we can have. And he is no respecter of persons. This is not just for you, but not for you, or for you back there, but not for you over there, or just for me. It's for everybody, whosoever will, can have the promises of God. Well, what does that mean? If you're willing to do your part, the part that gives you, which is to believe and to be obedient to God, to love people, to give. God's love for us is not based on our obedience, but Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. He didn't say, if you obey me, I'll love you. He's already made a decision about that. And that's one of the things you need to meditate on. God loves me. God loves me. He loves me. He loves me. God loves me. Every day, if you have a problem with that and you're not sure God loves you, go look at yourself in the mirror and say about 10 times, God loves me, me. God loves me. God loves me. Colossians 3.2 tells us to set our mind and keep it set, which is interesting. You know, you can, after this teaching today, you probably be really good for about an hour. But it's not that one hour of doing something right that turns our life around. It's doing it consistently over and over and over again. And I'm personally glad that I have had 45 years of studying the Word of God. And I can tell those of you that are younger in the Lord, whether you're in this room or you're watching on your computer or your TV or even listening to it on some device, that it is very challenging in the beginning, but it does get easier. I can promise you, I mean, I had such a hard time staying in peace in the beginning because I had grown up in a war zone and that was all I knew was turmoil. And if there wasn't anything going on, I'd be happy to start something. But peace now is my, it's my normal mode of living, I'm just like, that ain't worth getting upset over. It amazes me the things that I used to get angry about that now don't bother me at all. And so Colossians 3, 2 says, set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, 
not on things that are on the earth. Now, that doesn't mean to sit around and think about heaven all the time. It basically means to think about the things that God would think about or that Jesus thought about. It really means to think according to the word of God. The Bible tells us that our mind must be, must be renewed. When we're born again, we get a new heart and a new spirit but we don't get a new body. If you were 20 pounds overweight before you were saved, you'll be 20 pounds overweight after you're saved. <laughs> if you had curly hair, it'll still be curly. If you had no hair, you'll still have no hair. <laughs> it's not our body that changes, and it's not really even our soul that changes as soon as we're born again. When you receive Christ as your Savior, He comes to live in your spirit and he has to make everything in there perfect and holy because he can't be anywhere that's not holy. That's why the Bible says things that sometimes don't make any sense to new believers and it didn't make any sense to me in the beginning, like we're holy. The Bible says we're holy. And I'm thinking, well, how can I be holy? Look at the way I act. Well, you have it in you. You've been sanctified in Christ. And the Holy Spirit's job, the moment you're born again, is to start working with you. You go to the school of the Holy Spirit and he begins to work these things that are in you. Let's take the fruit of the Spirit. He begins to work these things in you out into your soul. Well, the first thing that needs to change is your mind because your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So when your mind starts to change, then your feelings start to change, then your will starts to change. God has given us free will. And the one thing he wants us to do is use our will to choose his will. That's the big thing. I can't be peaceful by willpower. I can only do it if God helps me. I can't change all my behavior and just be really sweet all the time just because I'm, God, I'm going to do it. I, I've got a strong willpower, and I know I've tried doing a lot of those things by willpower. But God didn't give us a free will so we could do everything by willpower. But the, the one thing mainly that he wants us to do is to use our will, our free will, to choose him. He didn't want a bunch of puppets that he controlled. He wanted people that would choose to serve him. Even Lucifer, as he was known before he fell, had free will. That's how he chose to rebel against God and was ultimately kicked out of heaven because of it. So Romans 12, 2 is probably one of the most important scriptures in the Bible, especially like the Amplified Translation, regarding the renewing of the mind. And I want to tell you that this really is a lifetime project. If don't, There's no point in thinking when will I arrive and not have to do this anymore? <laughs> there, I mean, I still have to cast down some of my thoughts and choose others. And if I'm having a challenge in an area, then I have to think right things on purpose. I'm writing a book right now on, of all things, is the devil real? Knowing when I started that, that I probably would have a few more attacks than normal. And so one of the things that happened to me about a week ago was I lost a whole day's work on my computer. I highlighted it and deleted it. Couldn't get it back. I could get the file back, but it was blank because I deleted it. So I had some choices to make that day. First of all, it really frustrated me, and that wasn't going to help me. So I had to, I just... I said, okay, well, maybe there was something wrong with that first transcript. I just believe the second one will be better. And so I finally just decided I'm just going to redo it again tomorrow and forget about it. Well, I'm glad now that I know that I can cast those thoughts down because if I didn't know God like I do, what I would have heard in my head is, well, why didn't God protect you from that? If God loves you, why did he let you lose a whole day's work? Or I would have heard stuff like, that was really stupid, deleting all that. You are really dumb. 
Well, see, now I don't have to think like that at all for one reason and one reason only, because I know the Word of God and I know the Word of God because I have studied the Word of God. You cannot have somebody else just put it on you. I think it's um, Mark 4, 24 that says the measure of thought and study that you give to the truth that you hear is the measure of virtue and knowledge that will come back to you. Now, it's great to hear people, but even like what I'm sharing with you today, if this is an area where you need help, the best thing you could do would be go home, look up these scriptures that I'm talking to you about, and read them for yourself. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed. Don't be conformed, but be transformed. And transformation takes place from the inside out, not the outside in. Be transformed by the, and changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Not just a little of it, but the whole thing. By its new ideals and its new attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in other words, if we, God has a good will for us and we can read about it and hear sermons about it, but if you ever want to experience it, See, there's a big difference in what's ours legally because of the blood of Christ and what we experience in our lives. And I don't want to just read about it and underline it in my Bible and highlight it and be able to quote it. I want to have it in my experience. And I think that gets confusing to people when they hear all the time, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours, and yet they never experience it. And and that's why there's, there's a difference. Your mind has to be renewed. So it says, if you want to experience the perfect will of God for you, then your mind must be renewed. Even that thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. We need to learn to think like a child of God. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I behaved like a child. Once I became a man, and he's talking about spiritual maturity. I did away with childish things. And then 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5 is our scriptural backing for the belief that we can cast down a wrong thought and choose a right one. You have to believe that you can do something about your thinking and that you can choose. See, if you're thinking something bad or wrong, well, how do you get rid of that? Not through struggle or frustration or effort, but you just simply choose to think something else. Because if if you put a good thought in there, then the bad one can't stay, right? You really can't think two things at once. You may be able to do two things at once, but you can't think two things at once. So 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, and both of these scriptures, Romans 12, 2, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, If these are unfamiliar to you, I highly recommend that you read them and read them and read them and read them and read them. And And something that has helped me in the past, it's not as popular today because of all of our use of computers, but something that has helped me in the past is to actually write out scriptures in longhand. I mean, today a lot of people don't even know how to write longhand, but (laughs) thank God I can still write cursive. And uh, But writing those out, helps get them in you. Anything that you do, any effort that you put out. And see, to be honest, we have got a world full of lazy Christians. Everything has become so easy, we download it. What I have to do now to study for a sermon compared to what I had to do 40 years ago is like light years of difference. I mean, I had to have dictionaries and Greek dictionaries and concordances and, I mean, everything imaginable to try to study or find one scripture. Now all I have to do is just put in part of the scripture and it pops up and gives me the reference. I can say all translations. It'll give me every translation that exists. But, you know, having everything easy 
is not always good for us. You know that? We might all weigh less if we didn't have escalators and elevators. <laughs> it's easier, but is it really good for us? So 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. We have spiritual weapons. The name of Jesus is a weapon. Praise and worship is a weapon. Knowing who you are in Christ is a weapon. Peace is a weapon. Thinking right thoughts is a weapon. And inasmuch, says they are mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. It's talking about a mental stronghold. And that's when Satan has managed to control your thought in an area to such a degree that he's kind of dug in and lives there. And those things are sometimes take a little longer to get rid of than other things. Inasmuch with these weapons, we refute arguments and theories. You know the devil will argue with you. Did you know that? And every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. So he says, take every thought, and this sounds overwhelming, but you can do it. It takes a while. Take every thought captive under the obedience of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so every thought that goes through your head that does not agree with the word of God, that's one that you need to say, no. This morning, I had to say, devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Shut up. And he kept talking. So I said it again. I said, shut up in Jesus' name because he was trying to make me feel guilty about something that I knew was false. So we're offering today the book Power Thoughts for your gift to the ministry of any amount. And this has got the whole program in it about how to win 12 strategies on how to win the battle in your mind. All we ask you to do is just be generous, send in the best gift that you can, and we want you to have it for your gift to any, for any amount that will help us continue preaching the gospel around the world. Thank you for joining us today, and we're going to continue this subject tomorrow. Today, for your gift of any amount, get Joyce's paperback book, Power Thoughts, where she outlines a workable program to turn thoughts into habits and habits into success. Get out of that mental rut you've been in and learn 12 specific thoughts to positively affect every area of your life. Get Power Thoughts today for any amount. Just use the Joyce Meyer Ministries app or go to JoyceMeyer.org or call 1-800-709-2895. Would you love to know more about God's will for your life? wouldn't, right? So mark your calendars. It's a live online event from the comfort of your own house. At Home with Joyce, discovering your purpose. Gain a deeper understanding of God's purpose for you and be part of an interactive conversation with our Talk It Out friends. It all happens Tuesday, April 30th at noon Eastern. Register today for the special online event at JoyceMeyer.org. There is a place where sorrow meets hope, where suffering finds relief, where hunger is satisfied and thirst is washed away, a place where the darkness of humanity is illuminated by the light of Christ's love. Project Girl. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.